Hi everyone, it's Gerald Cannon and welcome back to The Journey. Today I'd like to give you some basic fundamentals about cryptocurrencies. Fundamentally, it's just a collection of numbers and letters. This may sound a little complicated, but it's actually not that far off from what we see with the monies we use today. Every physical money bill in the world has a unique serial number. This serial number corresponds to information like when the bill was printed, where it was printed. So there's a record of all paper money that has been printed and is kept at the central bank which shares this information with smaller banks and the government. Most of us have a debit or credit card which therefore gives you an account number and a password and or a PIN number that you use to access the money in that account of which your bank knows your account number and the name because this information was provided to open an account. This information is also shared with a central bank and government. Now let's say you have a hundred dollar bill with the serial number 789 and the bank account number is XYZ. When you deposit that bill that $100 bill into your account, your bank, the central bank, and the government will see and confirm that the $100 bill 789 has been moved into bank account number XYZ. This is almost exactly how cryptocurrencies work. Each individual cryptocurrency coin is like a serial number you see on a physical bill, just without the physical bill. Just like the regular bills, Almost every cryptocurrency can be divided into smaller pieces. In the case of Bitcoin, each BTC can be divided into 100 million pieces called Satoshis, which are like cents to the dollar. Cryptocurrency wallet address is like a bank account, except there's no physical card that goes along with it. It's just an account number because you don't need to provide any information to create a cryptocurrency wallet. This means your identity is not attached to your wallet like a bank account is. Most importantly, any cryptocurrency held in your personal wallet is held directly by you, not by a bank like regular money in a bank, which means that nobody can shut your cryptocurrency wallet or block your transaction because you have total control over the account at all times. Now there is a trade-off. If you lose access to your cryptocurrency wallet or you forget to write down the recovery phrase you get when you make your wallet, well, you'll lose your cryptocurrency forever. Instead of banks and the governments keeping track of everyone's bills, account balances, these records are stored across all the computers connected to a cryptocurrency network. These transaction and account balances are public and can be viewed by anyone using something called a blockchain explorer. Because computers can earn cryptocurrency for processing these transactions on a cryptocurrency network, this incentivizes more computers to join the network to process transactions and earn cryptocurrencies. This makes cryptocurrencies network secure because there is no single point of failure. This is called decentralized and it's the polar opposite of centralized setups of governments and banks. There are two types of cryptocurrencies. You have coins and you have tokens. Now cryptocurrency coins belong to the cryptocurrency network. They are built from the ground up. What I mean by that is someone spent a lot of time and a lot of money putting together the code required to create a safe and reliable cryptocurrency network. Some cryptocurrency networks are made up of computers spread out around the world which are constantly double checking transaction histories and account balances. If you want to corrupt a cryptocurrency network, you would have to hack more than half of the computers connected to the network at the same time in order to do this, which makes it almost impossible for a cryptocurrency network like Bitcoin that has millions of computers spread around the world. That said, some crypto networks have fewer computers processing the transactions and are therefore more vulnerable to attack the same rules that apply to centralized services like crypto exchanges which is where most crypto attacks have happened and they're much easier and much more lucrative to exploit than the individual cryptocurrency wallet which is insanely secure and that's why you should always keep your cryptocurrency on your personal wallet whenever possible and only keep it on an exchange when you're trading or cashing out when it comes to investing in cryptocurrencies they're extremely volatile 
meaning their price can go up and down by as much as 50% in a day. The one thing that crypto offers is it's a very revolutionized cryptocurrency, which makes it possible to lend save and borrow without the identity or credit score or a bank. They make it possible to do business directly without other people such as a middleman taking a cut. Hopefully this provided a little bit of insight into the basic 101 of crypto.